Welcome back to another video at Greenline Garden Center. We're here today to talk about seeding. My name is Aaron, I manage the hard goods department here. Seeding is a big topic. Uh, do not be fearful if you're new to seeding. This is gonna cover the very beginner, entry level aspects of seeding. First thing on the list that you need to do is get your supplies ready. You may have some of this stuff at home, you may have seeded in the past, if that's not the case, any of your local garden centers here obviously at Greenland will have all these supplies for you. And we'll kind of go through step by step what you may require to actually start your seeds at home. First thing we're gonna talk about are trays. Come in two styles. There's a solid tray. There's also the tray with holes. These serve two different purposes in the seeding world. This one is designed to catch water. Uh, if you're seeding somewhere in the living room, somewhere not in a basement, you need to catch water, you need to protect furniture, you need to protect your items, this is what you need. This, the tray with holes can actually be seeded directly into. You can fill this with media, seed your seeds directly in this, place it on top of this tray to catch the water and you're done. So seeding tray is the first item you'll, you will require to start seeds. The next thing you're gonna need or the next thing that's very helpful when, for when you are starting seeds is a dome. Um, come in many different sizes, different styles, but a basic dome like this will just ensure success for germination. You may be asking yourself, well, what do I start these seeds in? There's many, many options out there and we're gonna kind of go through a few of them. Um, there's a standard plastic nursery tray. If you buy annuals in summer, if you buy plants at a nursery, you've seen these before, these standard six pack plastic trays. They work great because you can use them year after year. You fill them with soil, you plant your seed in it, you take it out, transplant it either out to the garden or to a new pot when you're ready and you're done. A lot of these also come with the dome, so that's great. It comes with a dome and tray, you're done. So there's the plastic model. The next thing you can do would be the Jiffy Pot model. So what these are, these are actually compressed peat moss. They're designed to break down in the garden. If you are starting something like a cucumber, like a squash, or a pumpkin, something that doesn't want to be transplanted, that doesn't want to be taken out of its original home and put in the garden, nice thing about these is you can plant directly in them. So again, you fill it with soil, you put your seeds in here, you get them started, and then you plant these directly in the garden. So the Jiffy Pot. The other thing you can do would be the standard Jiffy Pellet. This is peat moss in a netting. Again, just like these Jiffy Pots, you can plant them directly in the garden. So they're great for things that, like I said, don't wanna be transplanted. They're also great because they're low mess. You don't need to buy a tray and a bag of soil. What you're doing is you're just, you're just adding water to these and they're expanding. And we'll actually get one started here to show you kind of how quick it happens. Simply submerse it in water, or if you're starting in a tray, flood your tray with these pellets on there, and they'll expand probably to, I would say six to 10 times their size, and they're ready to plant as soon as they're expanded. So very, very simple way to do it. Uh, a couple more things you're gonna need to have success when you're seeding. You'll need a seeding media. A lot of people think they can just use any soil. Uh, take some garden soil, take some topsoil, any soil that you have in the house. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You need a seeding media. Reason being is, seeding media is very fine particles. Uh, a lot of the seeds we start are very, very small seeds. You need to make contact with those seeds. You need to allow the moisture from the media to go into the seeds. So you need to make good contact. That's what this, this media is designed to do. Um, the other thing it's designed to do is, uh, it has a lot of vermiculite in it. For those that don't know, vermiculite holds moisture, so it stays moist for longer. Last thing it does is it allows air, it's aeration. Um, so it's so it's a perfect media, it holds moisture, it's very fine, allows aeration, it's a perfect thing to get your plants started. One last thing we'll talk about as far as equipment goes is a light. If you have good windows, if you're blessed to have good southwest windows, you may be able to avoid the light altogether. Me personally, I don't have a lot of good south and west exposure, so I do need to use supplemental lighting. Um, this is, uh, a simple T5 fluorescent bulb on a stand. You can adjust it up and down as needed. Um, if you have good light, you may not need it. If you don't have light though, I would suggest it. The number one reason that seedlings fail, uh, that people don't have success seeding, that they maybe give up on seeding is because of improper light. If you don't have enough light, your seeds are gonna stretch. They're gonna become very, very leggy. They're gonna be very weak and fall over, or they just may not grow at all. And you know, you don't wanna spend all this effort, all this time, all this money to buy these materials and not have it go as planned. So. Supplemental light is great, uh, especially if you don't have, like I said, those good south and west exposures. So we've gone through trays, lights, uh, domes, seeding media. The next step is planting. We're gonna get into planting. 
We're starting here with the Jiffy Pots with our sterile media. Uh, the best thing you can do is actually start with it pre-moistened. If you're trying to soak this after you plant, you'll find that it tends to uh, either disturb the seed or just, just be very difficult to do. So what I like to do is pre-moisten. Whenever I'm actually working with, with seeding, I find the easiest way to water is either A, taking water and flooding this tray. So you'll actually fill this tray with water, allow it to absorb from the bottom. The other thing you can do is use something like a water bottle. I just soak the top like this. Give it a few good sprays. And the nice thing about the water bottle is you're doing a nice fine mist. You're not gonna disturb those seeds. You're not gonna move them. You're not gonna uproot them. You're not gonna cause any damage to those seeds by using something like a mister. So either flood from the bottom or mist. Once you have your media kind of moist, what you do next is get your seeds. I'm gonna be starting with tomatoes, probably the most common plant that people are seeding at home. The way I do it, the, the easiest method that I've found is to actually just use a pencil. What I do is I make a few holes in the media, just like this, make a few holes, get your seeds, Easiest method I've found again is just to tap those, tap the side of that package, make a fold, tap the side of that package. And you want to put one or two seeds per, per little cell that you're doing here. If you're going to start with Jiffy pots or you're going to start with plastic pots or, or maybe those Jiffy pellets, you want to do one or two seeds per cell. Reason being is that unfortunately not everything is going to come up. So you'd rather ensure some, some uh, success by having multiple seeds in those holes in those cells rather than just doing one seed per cell. Obviously that's not the case for every seed. If your seed is $5 a package, you only get 10 seeds, you don't wanna be wasting those, uh, those seeds by doing multiple, multiple seeds per cell. But in case of something like tomato, you get many, many seeds there, probably more than you need. So always seed a little more than you think you would, you would normally do. So do two or three seeds per each square. Once that's done, once you have those seeds on there, uh, I just take my finger, lightly cover it. The other thing you can do if you're seeding a large amount at a time, is take a handful of that sterilized media, put it between your hands, rub it over top of the seeds. What you're looking to do is just, just coat those seeds completely with the media. You should not be seeing any of those seeds poking up. You should have them completely uh, covered with the media. And then what you wanna do is actually just pat those seeds down. You wanna ensure that good contact to the soil so that they can stay moist, so that that seed coat can break and so that they can germinate. So what you're doing is you're just tapping lightly on top of those seeds, ensuring that the, uh, the seed actually is making contact with that soil and is firmly covered. And then the next step you're doing is you're watering. Again, taking a mister so you're not disturbing it or just being very, very gentle. Mist the top of that seed that you just seeded and cover it with a dome, simple as that. So you're covering with a dome, you're putting it somewhere warm, uh, preferably somewhere out of the way where it won't be disturbed. You're, you're covering with the dome. If you've watered enough, if you've watered your media enough, if you've done that missing, chances are you're not gonna have to water this again until the seeds actually emerge from the media. So check it every few days. What you'll find um, usually within a few hours is this dome is completely coated with moisture. You cannot even see through it. It's so coated with condensation, that's a good thing. That means you have really high humidity in that dome and that means that your seeds are gonna stay wet and they're gonna actually germinate. So you've seeded your seeds, you've watered them, you have your dome on, you're waiting for germination. Uh, as I said, check for signs every few days for germination. When you do have successful germination, that is a time when you can actually transition that dome off of there. The dome, the heat mat, any supplemental heating you're using is only to get germination happening. Once you have seedlings, once you see green growth on the majority of your plants, I would say probably 60 to 75% of your plants are up. That's when you can transition them from that really humid environment to normal room temperature. What you're looking to do is, is not just shock them. You don't wanna just take this off and say, hey, there you go, you're in room temperature now. You wanna slowly, slowly transition them. So most, most of these domes will come with vents. Maybe the first day open one vent, the next day open the other little side vent. Uh, on the third day, if, you're, if you really want to, if you really want to be careful with it and you want to really slowly transition them, take something like a pencil, a book, whatever, prop open the side like that. And then maybe on the fourth day, just remove that dome entirely. Um, the dome, like I said, is, is just there to keep the humidity high, which is great to get seeds to germinate. Once they're actually up though, that humidity can lead to fungal issues, can lead to things like damping off disease. Uh, just does not help uh, your seedlings to be in a high humid environment. And it's not realistic, you know, 
Um, when you're growing them in your house, it's not humid, especially in winter. When you're taking them outside, we don't have huge humidity here. You want to transition them to the conditions that we're used to. So you've seeded your seeds, you have some growth. In this case, we've seeded basil seeds a few weeks ago. Uh, we have some growth. Uh, if you look on your seedlings as they're emerging, you'll see a couple different sets of leaves. The first leaves that always emerge from a seedling are the seed leaves. These leaves uh, do not look anything like the actual plant. Um, they're, just a, they're just a nondescript leaf. Uh, a lot of the seed leaves will actually look the same regardless of what type of plant you're starting. They're the, just the beginner leaves of the seed to get that seed going. Um, when you're at this stage here, you have multiple seeds in a pot uh, and they're all up now. Uh, what you're waiting for is to have, is to see those first signs of true leaves. So that's those leaves that will actually look like the plant, in this case, little tiny basil leaves. When you're seeing these true leaves, if you had these in a cell, this is the time to actually to thin these seeds out. You only want one plant growing per cell. You planted two or three, you only want one finished plant growing in a cell. Look for the healthiest one. That may not be the tallest one. That may be the sturdiest one. That may be the bushiest one. You know, use your eye, use your judgment to, to determine what the healthiest one is in your mind and cut those other ones out of there. We don't recommend pinching and actually removing them because Again, these roots could all be intertwined with each other. You could actually be doing damage and removing a, a seedling that you want. So the best thing, take a p p pair of scissors, pair of pruners, and actually cut those, cut the undesirable ones out of there. So you should be left with one per cell of, of your seedlings. Once they have their true leaves, like you see here, um, now is the time to fertilize. Uh, until seeds get to this stage, they have everything they need within the seed to actually grow. They have everything they need to push that first set of leaves. Once they get to this stage where they have their first set of leaves, they no longer have enough nutrients to continue growth. What you're looking to do is find a fertilizer with a high middle number. In this case, it's 15, 30, 15. The middle number is phosphorus. This is 30% phosphorus. What phosphorus does is encourages rooting. When we have seedlings, when we have young plants, we're not really concerned about top growth. We're not concerned on how much growth we get. We're concerned about root development. If we can get those roots developed, if we can get that good base going, the plant will be healthier for it in the long run. How you're using this is again, sound like a broken record, once those first seed leaves are up, that's when you want to start fertilizing. You want to fertilize weekly. So every week or so, maybe every 10 days you want to fertilize, but you also want to fertilize with a very weak solution. So the, whole, the phrase weekly, weekly works in this regard. Uh, whatever this package suggests on the side, you want to reduce that by half or maybe even a quarter for the first seeding. You know, these are very young, tender plants. There's not a lot of root mass developed there. You want to start very slow uh, with a very weak solution so you're not causing any damage, not causing any burning. So a very weak solution from a fertilizer, maybe every second or third time you water, will actually ensure that these are, are growing well. When it comes to seeding, timing is very important. It's too early now in most cases to start your seeds. Believe it or not, if you start too early, you think you'll have a big, huge plant you can put out. Not the case, it'll be stretching, it'll be leggy, it probably won't be a healthy plant. You'd rather start at the right time and get those small healthy plants to put outside. In most cases, you're looking at about six to eight weeks from our last frost date, that's when you're wanting to actually start your seeds. In our case, May long weekend is the target date. So six to eight weeks before May long weekend, that's when you're doing the majority of your seeding, things like tomatoes, peppers, all those kind of things. Obviously, that's just a general rule. If you're looking for more specifics on when to start these things, we do have in store, uh, a, a sheet that goes through every plant that you'd ever want to grow. Flowers, herbs, vegetables, every plant. Uh, and we're going to actually link this in the description below. And the other thing you can do too is just simply check your, your packages of seeds. A lot of times this one here says start indoors six to eight weeks before last frost. If you don't have to start your seed indoors, I uh, usually won't put that on there. You can also look in the corner. A lot of times it'll say start early. So that's your indication of that. Hey, this is a plant that I actually do need to start early indoors to ensure success. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the very basics on how to start your seeds indoors. If you haven't done it before, get out there and do it. Uh, it's just something fun to do in winter. You can be hands-on with your plants that you're gonna be starting outdoors. Uh, get out there, and enjoy it. If you have questions, definitely come see us, give us a call. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment below, subscribe. We're producing new content all the time. And for more information, visit greenlandgarden.com.